Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm Luke Cannell with Logitech. Today's session is best practices for deploying Logitech Classroom Solutions. Today we'll cover a couple of topics. The first one, optimizing teaching and learning. That could be in-person, remote, or some hybrid model. The actual process of teaching remotely, what technologies apply as well as some live demos of that. Learning remotely, the same thing. What the learning experience is today, and then potentially what we see, what it could be in the future. Some hybrid teaching examples. This provides a lot of challenges to us in figuring out how to give educators the right tools to be able to work either at home or in a classroom and provide that educational experience to learners. And lastly, we'll give you some free tips on that. Before we get into the details, a little bit about me. I'm a technical solutions manager at Logitech. That encompasses the teams of pre-sales engineering and solution architects. So we work with educators and customers to define what pain points they have today, uh, define the problems and where they wanna be in the future, tying the right technology to those problems. The last 22 years I've spent in the unified communications field that's primarily synchronous, so voice, video, instant messaging, and some collaboration tools. Uh, I've also served as an adjunct instructor at Globe University in Minnesota, so I do have some experience in the educational space. And then lastly, I did lead a technology team that deployed the first 100% cloud synchronous distance learning program in Wisconsin that provided remote learners that were in non-urban or rural areas, the ability to receive instruction from educators anywhere. Uh, that solution leveraged a technology called Exchange Labs and Live Meeting, which later became Microsoft's Office 365. I'm gonna hand it over to Britt. Thanks, Luke. I appreciate it. And, and these are exciting times here at Logitech. We've got, we've got a lot of great solutions for you that we're going to highlight today. The free stuff at the end, that's, that's just going to be the icing on the cake. But really what we want to focus on are, are what's going to make your life easier. What's going to be the wow factor as an educator or as a, even a student attending class? How are they going to be attended to in the very best, very best way possible? We think about that and we look at the obstacles that are that are being that we're being faced with today. Uh, some of the existing technologies that already are are already embedded in that classroom and what it looks like and, and how we kind of have to tackle some of those subjects and whether or not the content, you know, how do we share the content to the students and have them get fully immersed into that subject matter and learn like they're supposed to be doing. And then lastly, when we think about, you know, how do you touch and feel, that touch and feel of education is gone today. Um, you know, when, you're, when you think about the environment and how you could go into a science classroom and actually be able to get your hands on, what does that type of uh, environment look like today? So when we think about that and we look at the remote learning aspect, obviously remote learner uh, and remote teaching, if you will, um, everything's being done at home. And when you are at home, what is your home environment like? Are you actually doing something that is relatively ergonomic? You're sitting at your desk for, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes minimum at a time. Maybe you get up and walk around a little bit. Maybe you do have a whiteboard back there that, that you're able to take advantage of, but definitely want to, want to keep in, in mind some of the ergonomic aspects of it. And, and then more importantly is how do you react to the students? You know, when you... When you see the image there in the middle, you're actually able to see that a gentleman is showing some inflection around a subject matter that gets him excited. So as an educator, are you excited and are you transferring that information so that the student on the far end, they have the same type of love and feel and passion for that learning that is being done. And then lastly, as, as we think about the, the educators right now and, and, we, and we look at what they're being tasked with doing, you know, everything is changing so fast right now. We've actually come to understand that 80% of the educators are actually actively involved with using webcams. And the webcam and the way that it's integrating into that environment is just imperative to the success right now for you as an educator, but also on the far end as well as the student. Luke, show us a little bit about that webcam and how it operates. That sounds great, Britt. You know how much I love stats, but you know what I love even more is real world examples and let's see it live. So this is an example of a Brio versus a built-in Mac webcam. 
uh, webcams now. One in the upper right hand corner is my MacBook Pro. The one that I'm looking at you now is my MacBook Pro built-in webcam. And then I have another one, the Logitech Brio, which is a 4K camera with all sorts of technologies uh, that facilitate automatic facial detection uh, and lighting optimization to make the experience um, as good as possible. So with that, you can see the difference. I'm looking at the Brio now, and then I'll transition. Now I'm looking at my Mac webcam. They're both pretty good, but you can tell there's a significant difference when, um, when the Brio uh, is, is showing the video. Now I'm gonna turn off the light. I have a backlight that optimizes my remote experience or the experience for others. I'm gonna turn off that light. When I turn that light off, now I'm looking at the Brio, and now I'm looking at the Mac. You can see there's a significant difference in brightness uh, and the way that I'm perceived for the, the remote learner. Yeah, the, that's a that's a tremendous that's a tremendous demo that you provided there, Luke. Is as we think about what the interaction with the teacher, the educator, and the student, and what it looks like, um, there's a couple of key takeaways that we want to make sure that you're you're fully aware of. Um, primarily, the, the the biggest one is being heard. Uh, we've we've kind of recognized that that you have the opportunity to take in cognitive learning aspects of the education. So as if you're below 15 years old, that is huge. You know, you may miss one word here and there, and but just by missing the single word because of whether it be latency or because of, uh, you know, not having a good headset that's involved, you might miss an entire aspect of that, of that particular subject matter. And therefore you're not going to get the answers right on the test. So when we think about that and we think about what it's going to look like or hear, sound like I should say, um, then, then you really wanna be aware of what web, webcams as well as headsets are involved for you. Luke, let's talk about some head, headsets for us. Hey Brett, that sounds good. Let's take two on the demonstrations now. Uh, so this is a demonstration uh, that really focuses on the audio experience of the learner. And I don't need to keep talking, let's do the demo. So I'm gonna switch and pull out my handy uh, hand back. Uh, we'll turn that on, I'll set it down, and then this is using a standard microphone, I'm on a speakerphone essentially, and uh, we'll start this up, and then we'll cover some of the comparisons between um, audio experiences. So we this. It's pretty uh, disruptive, uh, it's a highly disruptive experience. And now I will throw on the headset, and then I'll switch that headset. So now, now I have Anne Fee on, and you will probably be able to have a much better experience uh, with, you can still tell that there's a vacuum uh, in the background, but it's significantly more uh, discernible. And with that, we'll move to the next one. All right, Brett, uh, I will actually take the next one and we'll transition from that experience into hybrid teaching, which I think we've seen is one of the most challenging from a technology perspective because it involves so many different types of interactions. Um, some key criteria that we see in, in the hybrid teaching space is while generally it's in a, in a classroom, there's gonna be more space than at home. There are more room technologies available so we can generally have higher quality cameras and audio solutions and document cameras and a plethora of, of things. And then lastly, the, the key shift I think in, in the last, last probably six to 12 months has been the need to accommodate for synchronously in-person and remote learners. There are a couple of examples in this slide that do cover um, the, the hy that hybrid learning model. The one in the middle really is the educator that's in front of a whiteboard where they have a technology in the middle, a Logitech meetup camera that includes a 4K camera, mics and speakers that allows for that educator to use a whiteboard, it's within about six to eight feet, uh, to be able to communicate with those remote learners as well as the in-person learners. But then depending on the classroom and the space that's available, it may or may not make sense to have that camera and mic and speakers in the middle of the room. They, they may be placed in different locations. 
There are a couple of examples of that in the, in the bottom of the screen as well as the lower right part of the screen. It really comes down to make sure we understand, you understand what space needs to be accommodated for, what the content is that's being provided to the learner, and definitely contact your AVISBL rep that they can help assess the size of the room to make sure that this technology that we're implementing for the hybrid learning experience is appropriate. So as we see here, we have Alice on the right hand side where she has a second monitor. And this is absolutely critical to the educator experience. That second monitor allows for the educator to see what content they are presenting to the remote learners, as well as what those interactions are. So if the le remote learners are messaging questions or comments, or they can actually see the remote learners, and if they, they look like they have a question on their face, they can respond to that in real time. Uh, in addition, a wireless keyboard and mouse is incredibly helpful in allowing mobility in the classroom as there's going to be a blend of remote learners and in-person learners, and the educator may not be able to stay in, the, stay in the exact same spot for the entire course. Moving to the left-hand side, we have the Logitech Meetup with our highly professional Meetup stand that consists of six or seven math books. Uh, it's, a, it's a really creative experience. We, we, you know, we've had to deal with this um, for the last six to eight months, just figuring out ways to make things happen. Yeah, that is absolutely a real world experience there, Luke, where they have that. Um, that, is, that is not out of the norm right now. But uh, when we think about this and we think about the educators and how their experience, let's talk about the cameras and what the far end experience is like and maybe the, the, the rally cam in particular and how it would be able to uh, show us what's going to, what's going to happen on their, their side of things. Yeah, great. Uh, that's a great idea, Britt. Uh, so <laughs> the far end experience, this would be actually what, uh, what a learner would experience with an educator in a classroom that's maybe, let's say, 10 feet long with the camera mounted on the back wall. Um, I have a whiteboard as an educator. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I don't know how to write on a whiteboard, but I'm not confident that the educator actually, or that the learner actually sees the content that's on the board. I don't know, Britt, can you read that? Uh, not, not just yet, not just yet. Yeah, I didn't think so. There's a lot of technology in this room and you're seeing the whole thing. So if I have a preset on, on a Logitech Rally remote that allows the remote to be able to zoom in and it frames me because I know where the whiteboard is. I know where I want to chat and, and converse with the remote learners that facilitate that. How about that? Can you read that, Brett? Absolutely. All right, that sounds good. And then we'll zoom in even a little farther. So this camera has 15 times zoom. What that really means is you can have an extended distance, 15, 20, 30 feet from the camera and still be able to get really high quality uh, content passed to that remote learner. So let's say it's an art class. Uh, all that, that content can be sent to the learner uh, in an effective way. Britt, does this look okay? We're all set. I think I can pull that. I think I, pull, I might pass that one. <laughs> that sounds good. Luke, thanks for that demo on the rally cam. And uh, what you're looking at here is our meetup remote. This actually allows you to utilize your phone. So when we think about the kind of infectious controls that's associated to using a remote and having multiple hands on it throughout the day, how about just using your own phone, making that your own personal device so that you can feel very secure in what you're using versus what everybody else is using when they're when they're looking at the camera and that solution. That's just one of the free things that comes with some of the Logitech gear that's out there. Luke's gonna highlight a couple more right now for us. Hey, thanks for that, Britt. Yeah, we'll cover a couple of technologies. And this is all, again, free stuff or free tips, free tools. The first one is in Microsoft Teams, one of the more prevalent educational tools that's out there. And uh, a common request that we get on the security settings is, how do I, how do I keep students from entering my meetings and muting other students or muting me. And there is now a lobby functionality that provides only you as the educator, as the only person that can enter a meeting. We recommend that you do that as you get comfortable, as you engage with your students so that you control who enters into that Teams meeting. We'll also showcase uh, sharing content with Microsoft Teams and specifically in a Microsoft Teams room. It's pretty cool artificial intelligence blend with a whiteboard. Transitioning to Zoom, Zoom has very similar security settings and recommendations 
in education, ensuring that the educator is the person or the individual that allows for learners to join that meeting versus just letting any learners into the meeting and potentially taking over the show before the educator is there. We'll also cover some cool content share technology associated with Zoom. And then lastly, we'll cover Logitech Capture. Logitech Capture is a free tool that allows for blending multiple webcams listed in the lower left-hand corner to create a more immersive experience for the remote learner. It may be a Logitech Stream Cam and a Brio or a C930E or a handful of other uh, webcam technologies that allow for stitching video like you're seeing with us today with document cameras, content cameras, and potentially even whiteboards. And now we'll transition into a Microsoft Teams demonstration with some cool new technology that implements artificial intelligence with a traditional analog whiteboard. So this is a very unique feature to Microsoft Teams and it's actually a part of the Microsoft Teams room. Uh, it allows for collaboration with an analog whiteboard with some artificial intelligence built in to automatically see it. And this, I have uh, the perspective from, let's say, a learner where they're in a video call, but video isn't enabled. Let's say the educator wants to share their whiteboard that's either in their home office or in the office. Now you'll see what we have available to us is a camera that automatically picked up the edges of a whiteboard. This is the same whiteboard we saw before, but now I'm here as well. And you can see that I am um, translucent, right? So that the learner can still see the content as I'm here and um, can, can read the, the optimized inking and essentially see what I'm writing in real time. Once I you know, put something on the whiteboard, it optimizes the ink and um, then it makes me translucent. As I walk in front of it, you'll see that it still allows for me the, or the educator or the <laughs> learner to see the content um, without me getting in the way. So that was the Microsoft Teams demonstration, a pretty cool technology. Uh, it makes it simple and uh, it's just pretty unique. Next, we'll transition into the Zoom technology. It's something pretty similar. And the last tip with Zoom, it will show off a secondary camera that can help with the learning experience if we have something other than just a webcam that we're working with. I'm going to click on the new meeting icon in Zoom. That'll present a Zoom window to me. We'll see that now you can see me joining a Zoom meeting. Once I'm joined into the Zoom meeting, how I select a secondary camera is I actually click the share button. So if I click on share screen, that gives me an option. If I click advance at the top, I have quite a few different options, but in this case, we're gonna share the content from a second camera. And what this does is when you're using Zoom to either share your desktop or share in this screen, it presents the primary focal point for all of the remote participants by default to look at this screen, as opposed to fumbling around with a webcam, making sure that it's spotlight, spotlighted on, on the individual that's, that's speaking. Now, when I share this content from a second camera, it automatically makes this the primary point of focus for the learner. So this is actually going to be full screen for the learner where they can see that now this whiteboard that I'm working on is the primary focal point. And they'll also see me typically in the upper right hand corner um, as an individual with my webcam on. Boy, that sounds awfully familiar to me, Luke. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that we can tackle that, uh, that same type of functionality. Let's see what uh, Logitech Capture allows us to do. That sounds great, Brett. We'll transition lastly into Logitech Capture with a quick demo. So now I'm in Logitech Capture and I could be using this in conjunction with any platform, Google, Microsoft, or Zoom. And I have my primary Brio webcam set up as well as a document camera set up. I press one button and I'll switch to the document camera. Now, as you can see here with my funky capitalization and my uh, interesting spelling of education that we could now collaborate in real time and my students could consume that content. But let's say I want to see both at once. Well, now I click one more button and now I have, you can see me full screen uh, and you'll see some of the content in the left. But let's say the content's more important or is a better focal point. Now we can swap between 
the, the content being center and it's a, a little, it's a, a vertical view uh, and I'm in the lower left hand corner. But the real power comes in when we can see most of these in as big a view and clear a view as possible. And now you can see me on the right, uh, the content on the left. And again, this is real time and I could write whatever I need to write on this eight and a half sheet of paper. And um, again, can use this with Google, Microsoft, Zoom, or any video conferencing application. Thanks, Luke. That's a uh, that's that's a really good demo for people to walk away with, and and kind of just as a real real quick recap, um, you know, we really want to think of this as being as simple as possible and as limitless as possible. You've got all the tools, you have access to all the Logitech gear that you can that you can get your hands on, and we're trying to make it easier on you, the educator, and the far end, the students help them to understand and help them to realize their full potential as, uh, as we walk through this distance learning and hybrid classroom scenarios. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with you guys today and to, to kind of show off some of our gear. Luke, you wanna share anything else for us? Thanks, Brett, uh, and thank, thank you everybody uh, that's joined us today. If you do have any more questions about the technology or the solutions, please contact your AVI SPL representative and they'll take care of you. Have a great day.